This is Deep Natter. Recently, the closing of my former web host inspired Sean and I to take a step back from our respective websites. And it's allowed each of us to see the work we do and maybe more interestingly, the work we share in a different light. Also, Sean reveals an exciting new direction that his life will be taking in the near future. Here we go. Four days later, I, I, I. I talked to tech support and I said, look, I've got to go to a different host because they're closing down any day. I have no idea when they're closing down. Yeah. And when they close down, you don't have access. Nobody has access to migrate all my stuff over. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So in the meantime, I've made other arrangements. I, I, I showed you the, the site that I built in card. I which, love that. I'll be honest with you. I think it looks every bit as good as my WordPress site and in some ways even better. I was going to say, I mean, not to be, I mean, because you built a great site on WordPress, but I, I, for my money, I think it's better because of how much simpler and streamlined it is. It forces you to also be uh, less verbose yeah. about things because you're not trying to fill pages. Yeah. You know, it's just these small sections and it's a really nice kind of one page scroll view of everything you do. I think it's I, personally for me, it's better. I, I thank you. And I, I tend to agree with you, you know, and, and Adrian was saying, and I think rightly so, she's like, it, it meets people where their consumption habits are. Mm -hmm. We have learned to tap, flip, tap, flip, tap, flip through social media. And this website, web page, web presence functions in exactly the same way. You can zip through top to bottom in seconds and get an overview, a top level overview of everything I do. Which I really like. I, 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 like I do too. Because so many of us do so many different things, don't we? That we, yeah. we I think the problem is, and I've, I've made the same mistake as you in the past, is you then create websites that try and tell everyone everything you do. Mm -hmm. But it just kind of, I mean, as, as a consumer going to a website like that, I find it a bit overwhelming. I'm like, what, you want me to read essays about every little thing you do? I don't have time for this. It's, right. It is a consumer habit. Adrian's right. It's a... It's not how we take stuff in. Right. And keeping it simpler, I think, like that one page scrolling thing, I think is, is so much cleaner. They can then click through and find out more if they want to, but they, they don't have to start with the more. They yeah. can start at a top level selection of, of info that they need and then deep dive the sections that they want to. I think it's a terrific solution. I really do. And, you know, I, I was fortunate enough, I, I, I've talked to a lot of really interesting people over the years and many of them are kind enough to give me their time when I have a question or when I want to run something by them. And, and I'm, I'm really grateful for that. I am, mm -hmm. I am extraordinarily grateful for people who take time out of their lives to bounce something around with me. And mm -hmm. over the past several days, I've had a chance to talk to Andy Adams from Flack Photo, who is wonderful, wonderful guy. Follow Flack Photo if you don't. Um, mm -hmm. And CJ Chilvers, also really terrific talking to them about kind of where newsletters are at, where web presences mm, are at, mm. where, where these audiences are coming and going and, and how things are changing. And their insights have been really interesting. Um, things that I don't think about in the way that they do. And mm. in, in, in each case, they were really supportive of, of this, this pivot. And the great thing about the web, and this, is, this has always been true, I think, um, the web is fluid. It, the, the, the web is not like print where, you know, if I printed 10,000 magazines or something and, and decided I wanted to make a change, well, you're stuck. You can't do that. Yeah. But the web, one of the brilliant things about it is I have backups of everything. So I have my WordPress site as it sits as of yesterday. I have an exact replica of that site. So if this experiment that I'm embarking on uh, today and tomorrow doesn't go the way I hope, think, want, et cetera, I've lost nothing. I can go to a different web host and say, here's the backup of everything. Can you just restore this? And it will be exactly the way it was today. Yeah. Yeah. So you don't, you don't lose anything either way, but no. hopefully this, this experiment cleans things out in a way that it's far easier to manage going forward. I think it will. I mean, there are a couple of things that you have to do on the back end because you, there are redirects that have to be dealt with. You've got to do some 301 redirects so you don't generate 404 errors for things that no longer exist. But a lot of numbers. What? 
It's a lot of numbers. A lot of numbers. <laughs> you just threw a bunch of numbers <laughs> right. at me. I don't know what they mean. So, 220, 221, whatever yeah, yeah, it takes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> so anyway, there's a few behind the scenes things that you've got to do, but nothing, nothing really, the heavy lifting is not there. And one of the things that was kind of a, a terrific realization, and if, if you're listening to this and you're at all like me and and allow distractions to keep you from making the work that you ostensibly want and love to be making, this removes a lot of my distractions. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It takes away the opportunity for me to go tinker with something for hours at a time. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it's a win-win-win, I think. Anyway. Well, you you inspired me to do the same on my site because I haven't really done an update on my website for, gosh, at least three years. Mm. I haven't really touched it. And uh, just looking at how clean that was, I thought, yeah, my website is too much. It's too, it's too cluttered. Yeah. So I went in and completely stripped that out. I had a, I had a nice like um, video screen as a welcome thing, and then a button that you press in, which looked cool. But it did. It did look really cool. It adds nothing to the information. It's just a little bit of like tinsely show off, isn't it? It's yeah. Like, oh, look, look at this. Do you know how to do this on your site? Oh, I know how to do it on mine. You know, it's, <laughs> it doesn't really tell you any of what I do. Right, right. Remember I flash mean, intros? So do I. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so I just, I mean, I killed that straight away. Right. And all I've done is just, it's, it's now a very traditional, um, like if anyone uses um, Squarespace, I'm just using the Wells template now. Mm -hmm, I was on mm -hmm. Wexley. But Wells is a very traditional um, website template. It's the, it's the, it's the, this kind of small text menu and the left-hand column, uh, with different projects. And then it's, uh, galleries or, or text on the right-hand side covering most of the screen. It's that simple. And now it's just a portrait page, which is what you land on. I deliberately went through and resized all the images before uploading. So it loads much faster as well. Cause I hadn't mm. really optimized before. Mm -hmm. Um, there's a, there's a portraits tab, a streets tab, for street photography, and each only has about 15, 20 images in those galleries. And it's just that there's no text. Then there's a documentary page where I've posted 12 of these documentary films I've been doing with other photographers. Um, there's a philosophical page which is 12 of the videos where I'm sitting on a couch talking about something to do with creativity. And those are the four main galleries. And then underneath that, it's just a link to my book to, to explain what it is, a link to my store, an about page, a little media page with some interviews I've done and a contact page. And it's so much clean. And that's like a secondary menu. So it's like right. smaller text on the which yeah. is great. Yeah, so I love that you've given this. that a visual weight yeah. difference. That's great. Exactly. So there's galleries at the top. There's only four of them. It'll, it'll only take you a few minutes to flick through. And then there's five sort of more info -y tabs underneath if you want them. And then just four social media icons. And it's so much cleaner. It loads so much faster. All the info's there. I, I even sort of edited down the pages. So the page that talks about my book, I've just, I've just stripped it down to a little paragraph because yeah. that should be enough to get you interested. And if it isn't, maybe it's not for you. That's okay. And stop trying to sell things to people or push stuff on people you know doesn't it feel great page. though i love it? it it's so agile it's so nimble that you can you can get a, a a top level view of everything that you do very quickly and then there's yes. plenty of of room to deep dive if you want to watch a film or or take in more of the photographs and really kind of look at what you're doing yeah it's terrific and t tell me if you had this experience because like the, and I, i've had this every any time i've done it to a website but especially this week I, I, I finished this morning, actually. I finished doing that because there were little things that weren't working. It was still displaying um, the, the titles of the YouTube video on mobile for some reason. It made it look really ugly. So I had to mm. sort of go in the back and work out how to turn all that off. But, but I, I, I sat back after I'd finished it and did a quick click through, make sure everything was working. And I just suddenly had this thing like, I do good work. Yeah. You know, like when you see it all in one place, really cleanly laid out. I mean, cause I'll be honest, like the last little while I've, I've had like a, an insecure few weeks thinking, well, where's this going? You know, with, with everything changing and me sort of looking at other things to do with my life now as well. Did I do something worthwhile or was I just kind of treading water for a bunch of years and, and, and was it worth it? And, and I just, I just, I, I got, I got a little bit emotional for a minute. I was like, no, I, I do great work. And, and, and I'm not somebody who says that easily. You know, I, I, I can I confirm about that. <laughs> that yeah. is not something but, that you say often. 
but it's it's important to say that about our own work isn't it yeah. it's, and it's like you know i've i've been a professional photographer now for oh, i don't know 13 14 years something like that and I'm looking at the images I'm posting and I'm going, yeah, that's, that's where young me wanted to get to, mm -hmm. you know, and I am there. I, I am producing the sort of portraits I, I'm proud of. Um, and, and I can do it competent. I had, I did another shoot this weekend with somebody and it was just like getting back in the studio. It was such a quick shoot, 10 minutes. And, and just the images I produced in minutes with somebody was like, that's, Having that control to get there that quickly, that's what the last decade's done. Yeah. Look at this work. It is the sort of work I wanted to produce from the beginning. Look at the documentaries you're shooting. They're valuable. They're, they're slick. They're well-produced. They're classy. Um, and, and look at this book you wrote. Having it all in one place going, that's exactly what I wanted to do. In fact, it's more than I thought I would do. Hmm. And you, we forget to celebrate. Sometimes just tweaking a website and taking a step back when it's all in one place you can see what you have been doing rather than just obsessing about the one little project you're doing right now that's not coming together as quick as you hoped it would. Right. It's, it's kind of taking the the longer view of things. And I was just happy. I was just like, oh, great. You know, whatever comes next, I did this bit well. And, and, and I, you know, who knows where it goes from now, but, but I, I, I did what I wanted to do. And that's yeah. cool. Yeah, it is. Did you have a similar experience with yours? Very much so. Yeah. When it, and it's it's not just the web stuff, but I've also been been cleaning up the studio because I'm starting a new series of work. Mm -hmm. And and I, I, I have the the wall, the rail wall where I can hang things. I have that all filled with work and then I've got work kind of leaning up against it underneath it. And I, I did the same thing in person with the work and going and looking at, you know, 40 canvases going. This is really good. Yeah. This is good. I don't know that it's exactly where I want to be, but it's going somewhere and I'm okay with that. Mm -hmm. And it's the same thing. It's when I'm working on a piece, you know, it may get to a point where I need to take it out in the backyard <laughs> and deal with it. <laughs> oh dear, the sledgehammer's coming out again. <laughs> uh, but, you know, it, it is, it is that way. And, and with my, with much of my work that I've done, online since, well, let's say, let's say since Universal Studios, a lot of that, well, none of that stuff exists anymore. And I'm, I'm sad that I didn't keep better archives of the work that yeah. I did there. And since then, I mean, all of the work that I did for Disney, for Warner Brothers, for, you know, freelance clients, it's all gone by and large. I didn't keep any of it. And mm -hmm. for whatever reason, maybe I didn't think I needed it. I, I, I don't know. I just never kept even rudimentary screenshots of anything I didn't keep. Mm. And I'm sad at that because I remember there being some good work. It was of a period. It was of a time. I mean, if you looked at sure. a lot of the flash stuff that I did for Universal in 2000, 2001, 2002, it looks very much of that time. Mm -hmm. uh, it doesn't mean it's bad by any means, but you have to look at it through a slightly different lens, I think. It's not classic or iconic or timeless in that respect. But iconic. it was still good work. It was still solid work. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, I mean, I think, I think it's important. You know, one of the things that, that we used to do in design, and it's not unique to design, a lot of people do it, is, is after every project, we would have a postmortem. And we would, we would go back and look at what worked and what didn't work. And we would, we would discuss it as, as the team. Mm -hmm. And I think it's important because you're right, we get so myopic about the one thing that we're working on, the one project, the one picture, the one client, whatever it is, that mm -hmm. everything else takes a back seat and we rarely take the time to look back at it. And I think, you know, what you've experienced and, and to, a, to an extent what I've experienced as well, when you do step back for a moment and just look at what you've created, I think you'll be surprised. I think for a yeah. lot of us, we, we don't give ourselves credit for the totality of the work because we're so busy trying to get the next thing out and get eyes on that because that's the next thing and it's got to lead to the next thing and that's got to lead to the next thing that we don't, we don't take a moment and just pause and, and man, just, just look. And I think that's where, where people like Martin when he puts together an issue of March and Rock where he 
Mm -hmm. takes a group of photographs and prints them and lives with them and just kind of hangs them and, and flips through them if they're smaller and, and, and really lives with the work and lets it kind of wash over him. And Josh did the same thing for his book. And, you know, we know several people who do the same thing. And I think when you, when you look at, at work in, in a group, in a, in, in a grid, in a, in a, in a collection it allows you to see it from a different perspective. It allows you to see it. It allows you to see themes. It allows you to see connections. It allows you to see through lines that maybe you don't see if you're just focusing on an individual piece or an individual project. Yeah. We get too close to it. I think so. Yeah. 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 And there's loads of ways to do it. I mean, the one is obviously to do something like putting a website together and collating that work or to flip back through the things that you posted in the last three or four years, or to take a series of images and just send off for, for little prints. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, I, I I have this experience every time I put together the collections each year is I, as I print out my favorite, I don't know, say 150 to 200 images. I sort of whittle it down from about 500 to 150 to 200 images and I send off a little print of that and I just throw them on the floor and then I start Mm -hmm. trying to make sense of it and sequence it but looking at all that printed physical stuff you go oh this was a good year it was much better than I remember it being because I'm only thinking of like the three or four images that got some kind of buzz around them positive or negative online instead of looking at the totality of the work Mm -hmm. going oh I, I did a lot of things. I saw a lot of things. I tried a lot of new things. And there's a lot of movement here, a lot more than I give myself credit for. Because we just, I guess we can only hold a finite amount of things in our brain at any one time. But, and, and it is just two or three things that are stressing us out today or that are on our mind instead of having a way to put everything in front of you and see the progress. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and it's, it's so easy now. Um, and you and I have both separately and together recommended printing your work. Mm-hmm. It's so easy now to get a book printed of your work. And and it, it doesn't have to be just photographs. I mean, you can, you can no. photograph paintings, you can photograph uh, sculpture, you can put bits of your best writing, you can combine all of those things into one volume and, yeah. and have a record of that quarter, that month, that week, that year uh, that you can look back on. And I think that becomes... I don't know, as I, as I move forward and as I've been kind of going through my own site and, and these paintings, I started laying out the first zine um, mm. that I said I wanted to do this year. I started laying that out over the weekend. And great. Um, I, th- I, think, I think all of this has been swirling around in us for a while and, and we, haven't, we haven't really addressed it, you know, certainly not on, on the show. Um, but I think there is great power in, in seeing the things that we do because it, it allows you to see, it almost allows you to see it from the perspective of seeing it for the first time. I mean, at least mm-hmm. that's the way I see it because I, some of these things, I'm, I try to be present when I make them and then I put them aside and go on to the next thing. And I often don't go back, but when I, when I sat them out, I'm talking about my paintings, when I sat them out against the wall and on the wall, and just sort of tried to see them from the perspective of walking into a gallery space or walking into, um, yeah. you know. As uh, if they're not yours. As if they're not mine. Right. Yeah. Take my name off of it. And what do I think yeah. of them? And yeah. go, there's something here. There really mm-hmm. is something here. But we, we kind of, you know, uh, our, our success or lack thereof becomes that albatross. And often mm. it, it, it keeps us from seeing what we've done. Um, yeah. more objectively, I think. Yeah, absolutely. I, I, I just, I guess the encouragement is for people to just take a step back. Um, because I've never done that and, and gone, Oh gosh, I'm not going anywhere. Hmm. That's interesting, isn't it? And I don't think I'm special. I don't think like I, I make more progress than other people. I just think the human propensity is to not give ourselves credit for how far we have come Yeah. instead of give ourselves too much credit. And I think, we're we're all very myopic often, like looking at today's problems or tomorrow's problems and not thinking about how far we've come and remembering to celebrate that. It's it's as important. In fact, I mean, that's that's the only place we can get motivation from is remembering to, to celebrate that stuff properly as we go. Otherwise, it is always only problem solving. 
mm, which, mm-hmm. which which fair enough like maybe maybe that's the way it feels sometimes but that's not true it's it's solving the next problem on a continuum of constant growth that you've already come a long way on that's that's the way to to conceptualize it i think instead of going gosh there's another problem to solve only well that's not true because there is always a next problem to solve but you've solved a thousand already and isn't that right. great yeah. You're getting pretty good at this. So keep going, right? Because that's that's what this is all about. That's it. That's the whole story. Yeah. Can you articulate on on the back of kind of refreshing your site and taking a look at some of this work in in a larger group or or pulling back further and looking at it? Can you articulate how you feel about moving forward? Has it affected, has seeing everything in a larger group affected where you want to go moving forward? And if so, how? Uh, It's a great question. It has, it's quite specific for me, I think. I mean, how do I approach it? So, 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 I mean, I'm not sure how much to say. So basically what I've done is I've, I've applied to start studying again for, 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 Something that I am sort of trained, let me, let me not beat around the bush. Basically what I've done is I've gone and, and, and signed up to study counseling, to become an accredited therapist counselor. And I have a psychology degree, but um, that doesn't necessarily qualify you to be a counselor in this country. You need particular accreditation mm-hmm. and it takes a while to get it, but it's always been something on my mind. Like that's something I'd love to do. It feels like what I used to do with pastoring, it's helping people one-on-one get a handle of their lives. And I, and I think I'm fairly good at it. So I, I, I feel like that was probably always a direction that I would want to go. Um, and that's because the writing's on the wall with social media and everything changing as well. And this definitely can't be a job long-term for me. Right. That I, I knew I needed to start early, start making moves towards whatever comes next, and I'd rather get a jump on that now, especially since it's going to take a few years to do. Yeah. So what putting putting the website together did is it reminded me that even if that does end up being my long-term thing, this stuff will never go away and I will keep doing this as well. But mm. it will be on a reduced scale for me and more focused. So I will never stop being a portrait photographer. I, I love it. It, 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 it makes me so excited. It, it's, it's what I always wanted to do when I started in photography. It was always number one. Street photography, honestly, I could take or leave. I don't care about it at all. Um, and I, I'll probably keep doing it for fun because I like doing it and throwing stuff on things like Instagram. But it's never something that I want to build a career off or try and teach other people how to do. The portraits are what's, what's fascinating to me and what I think I'm strongest at. Yeah. So it kind of it kind of solidified that for me. And then when I was going through and I was starting to work out, well, what videos do I want to include on this site? It was really simple. It was, well, the documentaries have to be there because those are my favorite films to make. Mm-hmm. Are documentaries mm-hmm. about other artists or photographers. They're video and portraits, it, aren't they? Exactly. And it, yeah. is, it is all the same thing, isn't it? Yeah. It's, and that made me realize I, am, I, I will k- still want to keep making those documentaries. Yes, I'll probably throw them on YouTube or whatever the equivalent is in years to come. I will still want to keep making those and sharing them. Those are things that are, whether I have a day job or not, they're my creative outlet, my chosen creative outlet, because I have a skill set in that area and I love to do it. Yeah. And, and I think it makes a difference. It's, it's like when I talk about in the book about that f- finding that sweet spot of where your deep joy and the world's deep hunger collide. I really feel like the portraits that I take and the documentaries that I make help people to see themselves Mm -hmm. in a new light. Yeah. And, and that's really important work. And it's the same work a therapist does interestingly, or a pastor. It's, it's all the same stuff. And, and the, and the book that I wrote is all about finding a new level of self-awareness um, and being able to take a better handle on your lives. I, I, I kind of realize I'm doing the same thing everywhere I go. The wrapping might be different, but I'm doing the same thing. So what it did, it kind of helped me realize that, yes, I will need to make a plan, I think. I mean, because I can see things changing. I'll need to make a plan about how I pay my mortgage going forward because mm-hmm. I don't trust what's happening on social media. Yeah. So I want to go into therapy counseling because I know that I'll enjoy it, I think I'll be good at it, and it will help me pay my mortgage. But I still want to do the stuff that I'm doing at the moment that's in that same vein. I want to keep doing it because it's my creative outlet, but it's all the same stuff. 
Yeah. So I'll, I'll, I'll drop tutorials because I don't care. I'll drop the street photography focused stuff because I don't care as much. But I will really double down on portrait work and documentary work. And I'll still sit on a couch and talk about stuff because, again, that's kind of like – it's kind of like live therapy, you know? I'm mm-hmm. talking to – it's it's like me giving a TED talk is how I think about those philosophical videos where I sit and talk about a topic is I'm giving a talk to a group of people to say, hey, this is something I learned in my own life that helped me get over some difficult stuff or work out a problem that I was having. And I hope it helps you listening to what I learned through this. So it's kind of really distilling everything down and I'm decluttering my website, but I'm also decluttering my intentions at the same time. Yeah if that makes sense. And that's nice because the road ahead is clearer. It's not, it's not certain that any of it will work, but it's definitely clearer what I want to work and what I, what I want to risk for and try for. If yeah. that makes sense. No, it makes sense. Yeah. And, and that clarity, that clarity in and of itself becomes empowering because you, 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 you said it a moment ago, you're stripping away the sort of clutter that, that almost you feel like you have to do because that's what's expected by whoever. Um, but I, I will say that I've, I've known Sean for a while now and not once has he ever, you know, called me up and been over the moon about a particular set of street pictures that he's taken, but it has happened several times on the back of portraits or on the back of one of your documentaries. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. How about, how about for you when you put that together and took a step back, did you have any kind of, did you have any of that sense of what you've done and where you want to go? I, I think not necessarily where I want to go, because I think I've, I've known that I've wanted to continue painting and, and get more prolific about it. Mm-hmm. I think what seeing it all together has helped do is, is remove some of the fear around it not being any good, mm. which is something that I've struggled with for a long time. What seeing the work can do is it can squash that voice or it can help yeah. make it less of a scream and more of a whisper or, you know, something yeah. like that. So for me, I think it's, it's given me the freedom to go, I only need one person to like this. Mm-hmm. Just one. Mm-hmm. That's it. I don't need 800 people. I don't need a thousand people. I mean, it'd be great to have a thousand people that like it, but in the end of the day, there's only one of them. And it can only be matched up to one person. So that's all I really need. If I just, if I approach it as I'm painting for one, you know, yes, it's what I want to say, but only one person has to like it. That takes a lot yeah. of pressure off. Oh, gosh, yeah. yeah. You know, and same with the shows. I mean, I, I'm going through some, some changes about who and, and what types of conversations I want to be having moving forward. Mm-hmm. And it has nothing to do with what kind of lens you use or, you know, what type of setup. It doesn't have anything to do with that. Um, oh, no. <laughs> so I, th- I think there's a lot of good stuff ahead. And I think part of this, you know, I, I was really stressed about this whole web host thing because it, again, like we talked last show, it comes out of nowhere. And that's not something you think about. You don't think about how to pivot in that way, because like other things in, in life, if it's working, you don't think about it. It just, it just becomes a given. And I thought about it as a, as a real problem. And I was really upset about it. And Adrian was like, Oh, you're really upset about this. And (laughs) you you can imagine her saying that. (laughs) Uh, But it doesn't, you know, not everything that's an obstacle is a negative. Not everything that appears to be a barrier is, is a bad thing. You know, in this case, it got me to this yeah. new, this new way of thinking about it. It got me to, to kind of put a different foot forward and you've seen some of the progress of it and your commentary has been terrific and it's been very encouraging and it, and, you know, talking to some other people and, and who, who are in the know much more than I am about these kinds of things and for them to go, yeah, yeah good idea. Great idea. Yeah you know, frees you up. Um, yeah. n- now I, I, I know me well enough to know that, that I'm in the honeymoon phase of this decision. What mm-hmm. will be the challenge is 
a week, two weeks, a month, two months from now, do I still feel the same way? Or am I going to get that itch to go distract myself? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's sustaining it, keeping yeah. perspective, isn't it? It yeah. is. It is. I mean, yeah. you, you've been around for many of those conversations. By the way, are my rates going to go up when you are actually licensed? <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> Bills in the mail. <laughs> <laughs> Worth every penny. Worth every penny. <laughs> he says now. You see my rates. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, I mean, I, I think that that all of this is good and self-reflection and self-evaluation and 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 all of that. It, it, it can be a really good thing if for no other reason than it takes you out of the daily bubble. I think so. I get stuck in that bubble. You and I have talked about it. You get stuck in it. A lot of people we know get stuck in that bubble, that, that hamster wheel of, of produce, promote, produce, promote, produce, promote. Yeah. And and that time for reflection and self-evaluation and self-improvement and and just being present with something outside of putting work out online or whatever that's important too. We we're putting together um we we're, we're basically putting together this itinerary for the retreat we're doing in June. Mm -hmm. um, at the moment trying to work out what we want to do and and it's all this stuff. This is what I'm realizing because we're trying to work out well, do we want to have sessions and do we want to sort of teach some things? And I just thought, no, I, I'm not interested in any of that. I don't, I don't mm -hmm. want to, I don't want any PowerPoint. Do you know what I mean? Right. I want, I just want to create space for people to do what we're talking about, which is step out of the bubble that you're in day to day where all the immediate problems are and take a long, hard look at yourself and try to get some perspective and, and let it solidify over that week enough that you will be able to sustain it when you get back. Because yeah. that's, that's the value. And it, I, I thought all I really want to do with these guys are do, I, I really want to do the Enneagram personality test with them mm -hmm, mm -hmm. just so they can take a look at themselves and know how they work, how they're motivated, how they relate to other people, how they produce creative work. Because I think it's really valuable for that kind of stuff. And I want them to do morning pages. And I, I, that, that's kind of it in terms of sessions. And then yeah. like Vla and I will both have one-to-one -one sessions with everybody at some point where they can kind of talk about where they're at at the moment and the things that they're struggling with and the rest of it. But, but I don't want, there's, I don't think there's anything more valuable than taking a step out of your normal context with your normal voice that tells you you're, you're terrible at what you do, or you're really struggling or this problem's coming up and actually taking a long view of things taking a look at yourself and knowing who you are better in a way that you can then go back to the things that you do with a much bigger perspective than that crisis mode we often all live in. And to me, that's the kind of retreat I need regularly. And I, I take myself on, I try and do it a few times a year, just go away for a few days and, and do that for myself. You know, you don't need to attend someone's retreat to do this stuff, but just to go with no agenda other than I'm going to take a long, hard look at where I've been what's really going on at the moment beyond the immediate crises and who I am in all this and where I want to go. It's, it's such basic stuff. Yeah. But, but sometimes doing a website triggers that, you know, like sometimes, sometimes, yeah, taking a minute to clear out your portfolio or to, or to sequence images for a book or, or to buy a bunch of prints and lay them out in front of you to remind yourself where you've been or it, it does that for you. And it's, oh, I, I just find it's so healing and you're right. The trick then is to, to sustain it when you go back to the daily grind. But, mm -hmm. but you've got to find little ways to do that, even that, I suppose, you know? I think so. To, to I mean, I, I think stop. that's where y you said something a minute ago about morning pages. I've gotten away from my morning pages, and I, I need underline, underline, underline to get back to it because yeah. it does make an immediate difference in how I feel, partially because... I don't have a lot of in-person friends, so Adrian ends up being kind of my de facto, hey, listen to this. Oh, my gosh, I found this great fact. And, oh, oh, I'm going to do this. And, and, oh, there's this thing about the website. And, oh, there's this thing about code. And she just gets overwhelmed mm -hmm. at being on the receiving end of all of that. Mm. And, and it's partially because she's she's here she's she's yes my best accessible. friend but yeah she's accessible that's right. <laughs> but you know she's like look i care about this stuff to an extent yeah 
but I don't care about all the minutia the way you do. Yeah, 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 yeah. And when I was doing my my morning pages, I would, in many cases, I would present them as conversations. I would I would write down these things that were going through my head so I could get them out of my head. And I think mm-hmm. that's really the value for me. I mean, everybody's going to bring something else to it, but the value for me is to get all of this stuff that I get spun up about and have to get out to someone. I can get them out mm-hmm. on the page, which then frees me up to go do other work, have other types of conversations, connect, be present, whatever it might be. But all of these little things that I get so spun up about, if I can get them out on the page, it gets them out of my immediate need to keep them front and center when somebody else enters the room. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. You need somewhere to dump all that stuff. Yeah. Because that's, that's the other thing I think about those sorts of thoughts that sort of we, we need them out somehow. Otherwise, they just end up swimming around in our head, making a lot of noise. And at a point, I think it becomes very difficult to sift out which emotions are attached to which thoughts. We just know we feel bad. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. We can't work out. Wow, which that's thought. a great point. Wow, that's a great point. Yeah. Uh, Say that again. Say that again for people in the cheap seats. <laughs> but basically, the, the, the thoughts that we have, I mean, if we have so many thoughts swimming around in our head, we feel things about those thoughts. But at a point, if, if it becomes too cluttered in there, we, f- we forget which emotions are attached to which thoughts. And it just becomes a soup of noise. Oh, and and, and you, have to, you have to sift. Yeah. And I think those morning pages or whatever your technique is for doing it, um, your, the morning pages, for those who don't know, by the way, it's Julia Cameron, the artist way, she came up with this idea of sitting down every single morning and just writing out three pages of text, whatever comes to your mind, just write it out, whatever thoughts you have. You don't have to edit it. You don't have to make it sound clever. It's not for anyone else to read. You just brain dump onto pieces of paper. Um, and I think doing that helps you externalize those thoughts. And then as you write something down, you work out again, which feelings attached to that thought and it becomes filed properly. I think it's like, Mm -hmm. it's like a filing process Mm -hmm. so that you actually, because this is a problem we all have is this like modern era issue we have with anxiety is I think a lot of it is we, we, we're so overwhelmed by so many things. We, we forget we have to do a lot of sorting. And then we can say, oh, I know which two or three things are actually making me feel anxious. It's not everything that's making me feel anxious. So I don't need to snap at my wife because she said something because she makes me feel anxious. It's nothing to do with her. I just haven't done any sifting. And I'm now, I'm now misdirecting frustration at things because I haven't done that sifting work. And I think that's, that's the morning page's value is actually passing all that stuff out. Yeah. Yeah, it is. I mean, I, uh, like I said, I, there noticeable difference. And Adrian has said, you know, you need to get back to that. <laughs> She's very gentle the way she says it, but it's, 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 it's a, it's very much a, you need to get back to that. <laughs> you need to get back to that. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's, it's invaluable stuff. Yeah. And I think that to your point, seeing it on a page, makes it real in a way that thinking about it again and again and again doesn't. Yes, absolutely. Because I think we're lazy about how we think about our problems as well. Mm-hmm. We, we, kind of, we kind of think about them and they make us feel bad. And we just, we just sort of then put them to the back of our mind where it's still making us feel bad, but we're not really processing it anymore, which is right. useless. Right. That, just, that just makes things worse. But when you write it down, I think you bring it right to the tip of your conscious mind and you have to, you have to stare it in the face um, in, in a way that you don't necessarily if you're just kind of churning it over in the back of your head during the day mm-hmm. where, it, where, it, where it's there enough to make you feel more anxious but not there enough to solve it. Right. That's well, and, and, and you can also see if it appears in multiple morning pages, maybe it's something that, that consciously when you're, when you, or subconsciously when you're thinking about it, you don't think it's, as big of an issue as it may or may not be. But when you see these things appearing and reappearing multiple times across multiple pages, it gives you, I think, a more concrete representation of how big some of these things can be and how much attention they need in order to work through. Absolutely. I mean, I've, I've had experience many times in my life where I've, where I've been doing this journaling practice and, and started reading back through a previous month's you know, writing and 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 been embarrassed by 
how many times I mention the same thing. And I, mm. I, I get sick of my own whining about mm. it. And it's like, well, but that's not, when I, with, with hindsight, it's not that big a deal. Why are you obsessing about this small thing and making it much bigger than it is? And it's almost like a, a, a snap moment of like, I'm being ridiculous. And I pull mm. myself together immediately because those pages echo my own voice back to me. And I realize I, I'm making something. There are other problems I have that are legitimate, but this isn't one of them. And I'm obsessing about it as if it is. And it's not. It, there's like a, it was like a weird clarity that comes when you externalize your own voice and have it play back to you. Why don't we, could we, you know, it's the end of the month. Could we make a, a, a commitment slash challenge? to each other that the, and to the listeners that we're going to do this every day for the month of April. Yes. Let's do that. I love it. Cool. Um, Excellent. April fools. No, just kidding. We're definitely going to do it <laughs> <laughs> next week. Psych. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I think that's great. Anyone, anyone who listens, who wants to jump in on this challenge as well. And it'd be great to hear from you on emails about what this experience has been like uh, yeah. for you as you're going or at the end of April. So every day for the month of April, every morning when you rake up, the best way to do it is before you do anything else, sit down and just brain dump three pages. Mm -hmm. it, it, it doesn't have to be about anything in particular. Just whatever's on your mind, put it on a piece of paper, put it, put it in a book, get a journal, get a little school notebook or something and just three pages every day. I love it. I love it. If you've got questions about our April Morning Pages Challenge, you can send us an email or a voicemail at deepnatter at gmail.com. Subscribe in your favorite podcast app and support the show by leaving a review or a rating wherever you listen or by sharing the episode on social media. Help support the cost of producing the shows by tapping the donate button at jeffreysadoris.com. That's J-E-F-F-E-R-Y-S-A-D-D-O-R-I-S. Connect with Sean on Twitter and Instagram at Sean Tuck. That's S-E-A-N-T-U-C-K. On his website at seantucker.photography or by searching for Sean Tucker on YouTube. Connect with me on Twitter and Instagram at Jeffrey Sidoris. As always, thanks very much for listening. Thanks for being here. We appreciate your time and we hope you'll come back for the next one. Mm -hmm.